Hello and welcome to 52 Weeks. This week we're going to continue the discussion of Chapter 5, Housing. And in this chapter I've split it up into six segments to make it a little bit easier to digest. That was looking at the introduction, number two, the building typology, number three, building statistics, number four, issues in housing, number five, observations, and number six, building blocks of Harrisburg. This week we're continuing in the Chapter 5, Housing, and looking at building statistics. Uh, this area right now we're looking at affordable housing stock. And based on the census tract data, you can see this image here showing all the census tracts. Um, the data collected from the end of the comp plan was every tract contains 20% of buildings older than a century and 70% of Allison Hill, Midtown along the river, Uptown West of 3rd, and Camp Curtin is where they are focused. The additional stats that are in here is that 89% of uh, our older structures in Harrisburg they contain irreplaceable cultural value in that they are uh, materials that are and structures that are not made the way they are made now. Housing, city's most significant long-term asset is in these this housing stock, and the individual investment for the community is the importance of street and public space. So there's this relationship between the single parcel and the streetscape itself. Through the 120 plus public engagement meetings, um, the greatest desire among residents uh, was the quote, need to build internal capacity for the specialized maintenance of historic housing stock. And here I've added an image that was from the OPA plan room, the plan room that is on Liberty Street, and shows the maps of all the pushpins where they had these community meetings and various phases of these community meetings. So uh, you can see the diversity of neighborhoods and who they were trying to connect to and reach. This is actually a very important image because I don't think a lot of people have seen this. It hasn't been reported on. Uh, it's been talked about, the 120 plus meetings, but this image is important. Also with that is the individual uh, slips of paper for all the ideas that people submitted. So that's all still collected as uh, you know, artifacts from the process. Concentrated residential development is represented in some of the areas and discussed here where in 1941, we've got the Herviter Homes, the 1950s and 60s where Hall Manor was set up, that's South Side neighborhood. The 1960s and 70s, 40% uh, of Midtown was replaced. Uh, in there, the 1970s and 80s, we had downtown uh, development happening. The Downtown Development Corporation, Harris Town, um, is uh, 1974 is when it formed. And also in that point, we also had the 1972 Tropical Storm Agnes. So that's another milestone to be thinking about what has uh, been the effects of housing within Harrisburg. The 1972 to 1999, over 40% of the downtown was rebuilt. That's a significant number to remember. And then in the 2000s, Tract 206 is Capitol Heights was the most recent uh, development of housing when you look at larger uh, housing. There's also the Uptown neighborhood that's in the mid-2000s as well, uh, developing on Green Street. When we look at our total number of units, uh, the 48% are one-unit attached buildings, which are row houses and duplexes. And there are 16% that are two to four unit buildings. And these are typically subdivided houses. So in total, 64% of the housing stock is an attached uh, type of building. And then we have 22% large apartment buildings that are professionally managed properties. And then there's uh, about 13% of the housing stock that is detached single family buildings. We will look at the census tract of 201 and 203. This is downtown and lower midtown. Contain These are 10 or more apartment buildings, 50% of the total units available, uh, medium rise high to high rise housing structures. So there's a research note and a rare building note to put in here is of the one unit attached duplex and row house dwellings in Harrisburg, they represent 48% of the housing stock and PA's norm as a state is 18%. And then in the US overall is 5.8. So we have a huge number of uh, buildings that are housing stock that just don't exist uh, in even 18% of the US. We've got this this rare building and also great asset to be thinking of. And how do we uh, look at it from a point of, this is something that means a lot to the community and looking at people and place. 
So the comp plan also recommends that further research should be conducted within the known continuum of focus on suburban detached dwellings within the 20th century housing policies. So we look at um, what's driving some of the suburban dwelling and housing that's out there and mindsets. Uh, this is stuff that should be researched and looked at uh, within the amount of percentage of high percentage of housing stock that we have. We have uh, the city must re must focus on the reinvestment of one unit attached dwellings as part of the city's premier defining assets. And this is a question of how do we uh, and maintain these structures uh, that are here that we already have that we don't lose more. The one unit detached housing concentrated in the first tier suburban areas. This is in Uptown and Riverside. Italian Lake is 30% higher than the average homeownership rate in Harrisburg. In looking at the unit square footage, the 2010 census data shows the increases of sizes in the types of housing that's around Harrisburg, Northeast, and the U.S. So when we look at these averages, we've got 2,500 in Harrisburg, 2,300 in the Northeast, and essentially 2,200 uh, average across the U.S. So one last thing in this section is to think about uh, the transitional housing options. The transitional housing units are any public housing, homeless shelter, recovery, or transitional unit. Uh, the data was collected in the comp plan regarding this. You can see the uh, chart that's here, the table. There are approximately 3,600 transitional housing units. 68% of all options are public housing. Why is this important to understand is that we should be really thinking about part of this capital area coalition on homelessness, and we really need to look at adequate housing for the homeless population and house affordability and transition into home ownership and, and transition into stable uh, living. The homeless services groups know the homeless population personally and seek them out during hazardous weather conditions. There's a great support network. The Capital Area Coalition on Homelessness is really on top of this, but how do we continue to support this and look to ways to provide uh, dignified living uh, in this river city? So we look at this transitional housing options, what Harrisburg needs, well-managed, affordable housing in all neighborhoods. Um, the uh, quote here out of the comp plan, since almost all new construction in the city of Harrisburg is subsidized, each new building could be required to contain at least 10% affordable housing units integrated into market rate housing. We don't need just concentrations of transitional housing in specific areas. Uh, well, the idea is to bring this to all neighborhoods. And this is important because we look at how we understand our community and how we can actually look at helping each other to understand community capacity building.